Um, you see the two main generals here, uh, Johnston and Sherman, um, and flanked by them are Wade Hampton and uh, Judson Kilpatrick there, along with some other staff on either side. Um, it was said that uh, Johnston was neat and very presentable. He said he looked, uh, one of the Union observers said that he was very uh, handsomely dressed and very sharp looking. Where, by contrast, Sherman had been marching and traveling to get here to get to, to other locations. So he was a little bit more disheveled, unregulated. He had dirt on his stuff, uh, on his pants there. Um, another fascinating part for me was, the, uh, was Wade Hampton. And I'm from, I grew up in Columbia. I was born in Raleigh and, and grew up in Columbia, South Carolina. So there's two things you know about Columbia is Wade Hampton and Sherman in the burning. And so there's no uh, love lost between these two gentlemen. And um, I read in the new book that's on the uh, display out there that Wade Hampton actually uh, decided instead of having his sword, even though he's got it here, decided to carry a stick, a twig, in a show of defiance to the very end to say, you know, hey, I can beat you with a stick. I don't need my sword. I don't need it. And uh, so I just thought that was a real piece of uh, Southern uh, <laughs> uh, Gamecock pride there. Uh, we've also got Judson Kilpatrick here. I mean, equally matched. I almost had it designed 50-50 like a football line. You know, you've got the two opposing forces coming together in a very simplistic way. Um, but you can really see some subtle details. These guys have been fighting each other after uh, Jeb Stewart passed, uh, was, was killed. Uh, uh, you know, Wayne Hampton took over. Judson Kilpatrick, they have been fighting across the fields for, for several months there. So this is the end of the end. There's some other subtleties. You can see also the reinforcement of his defiance by his horse rearing up. He also made a comment that day that, I'd love to shake your hand, but my horse is just a little too uppity right now. <laughs> and I think you're really just kicking him at this, you know, this horse. Uh, you've also got this subtle artistic in, uh, interpretation where the one horse is kind of bowing to the other horse here. Uh, there's lots of little elements like that that I put in. Um, one of the funniest anecdotes that we had, well, we were finished with this piece, and I was showing it up, I was, I was sending them emails of the, um, the, the finished piece, and um, John emailed me and said, that looks great, we've got one tiny minor, minor problem, possibly. I originally had Judson's horse, White, he was a gray horse, and he was a black horse, almost a black horse. And he said, we, got, we just found documentation that this horse was a, was, a, was a white horse. And I'm like, great. How am I going to fix that? I mean, it's done. I've sprayed it and everything. So I really had to do to be due diligent to make sure that we can get the most authentic piece that we could uh, to pay homage to these men. I went back to the, to the studio and said, okay, I've got to make him brown and him white. And uh, that's what came out. I hope I did a good job with it. Uh, you've got some subtle things. You've got the, of course, the ornate uh, Confederate dress, the general's, uh, uh, what do they call them, braids, or the chicken guts, what they refer to them as. But also, I put in a little tip. So, you know, uh, Wade Hampton was a millionaire planter, uh, South Carolina, and I put a little uh, South Carolina uh, uh, palmetto tree down here in his, in his uh, chest collar. I thought that was a neat little touch. Um, we've got the cavalry back here. But basically, that is the work of working on about nine months to a year uh, since we first started this idea. And I, uh, I'm very proud and very privileged to, uh, to be able to help preserve North Carolina history. I think this is an important event, and uh, I'm just so humbled and proud to be a part of it. So thank you very much. Thank you.